Yeah. Welcome, thanks for being here at today's reception and program. I'm Joe Gangwish with KRVN, very happy to be with you here. As we get things started, I'd like to pay homage to a man who I've admired for my 25-year broadcast career. He's been a friend and a mentor, a hard worker, and a real company man. Since he can't be here, let's honor Mike Laporte for his retirement. <laughs> Mike has dazzled us with his wit, charmed us with his singing voice, and amazed us with his dance moves. You can see proof of that on Facebook. But he has also been the ag voice for KRVN and the Rural Radio Network for close to 25 years. So Mike, we have a few folks here who would like to say a few words as we celebrate your retirement with you. So up first, Terry Haney, who's director of the Nebraska League Program. I'd probably feel more comfortable if Mike was up here with that microphone right in my face. But, uh, you know, my wife always reminds me when I go to these types of things and I'm expected to say a few words that she always says, you're not very funny, so don't try to be. And so I'm not. I'm, I've also been told I'm sometimes very serious, but, um, you know, if I knew that we were here to roast Mike today, I would have brought a bigger oven, but I don't think I'll fit in one I've got. But I'll leave it at that. You know, on behalf of the Nebraska League program, Mike Laporte has been so important um, in our program, the development of future spokespersons of Nebraska's ag industry. And, you know, I had to do a little research uh, way before my time. Uh, Mike served two terms on the board, six years. Uh, he spent one year as the vice chairman of the board of directors of the Nebraska Ag Leadership Council, and then he spent one year as the chairman of the Nebraska Agricultural Leadership Council. So the behind-the-scenes work that he did was so gratefully appreciated to the generations of agriculturalists that have come since then. But I got to know Mike um, as the director of the program. He worked very hard with us uh, here in, in, over at Kearney at the University of Nebraska Kearney on our communication seminar. And he's the reason when you listen to a lead alum out there on the radio, he's the reason that they're doing so well. He's the reason that they can speak and tell the story of Nebraska's farmers and ranchers and the production practices that they use. And so any time in the future when you hear a lead alum on the radio, just think of Mike Laporte because he's the reason for it. Um, Mike, you're going to be missed. Um, he is motivation for me that someday maybe I'll get to grow up and retire. <laughs> but Mike also served as our MC of the annual banquet for a lot of years. In fact, I tried to find out how many years and, and uh, you know, Dr. Blesick couldn't remember and his wife Kay, who was Mike's first cousin, couldn't remember either, but he did a great job for us there. Um, he's been a great friend, not only to lead, but a great friend to me, and I wish you and your family the very best in your retirement. Have fun, enjoy those grandbabies, and may you have more of them come your way. So thank you, Mike. A job well done. Thanks, Terry. And I should thank Mike for the Mike Report joke book, now that I am Mike told me before today that he was going to continue contributing to that joke book. Now, <laughs> well, as you know, uh, us in the uh, farm department, we are members of the National Association of Farm Broadcasters. The executive director of NAFB is here with us from Platte City, Missouri. Ex-farm, well, you're still a farm broadcaster at heart, aren't you? Yeah, right. <laughs> Tom Brand is here, so let's bring up Tom. Thank you, Joe. Mike, congratulations. It's an honor to be here today. Um, I got up early this morning and it was well worth the trip. I don't get an opportunity to, uh, to go to a lot of retirements. Um, it seems like lately I've had the opportunity to, uh, to attend more farm broadcasters' funerals than I have retirements, so that was meant to be a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. So this is a much happier occasion. You know, as, uh, as I came here today, I remember that my, my name tag um, was out in the car, so I ran back on my name tag, and, and I remembered as I, I came in, we, we just sent name tags out to one of our NAMB members across the country. We, we had a few that were on hand for some meetings, we'd hand them out at different churches and that kind of thing. And we just got done sending out name tags for those that we hadn't handed out at trade shows last week. So Mike got his name tag just in time. Um, but, but he forgot to wear it here today. <laughs> there, there's a few things come to mind when I think about Mike LaPorte. Um, one of the first things that comes to mind, and I saw him do it today, is I can't remember ever going into a meeting that I didn't see Mike coming in ahead of me carrying a briefcase. Yes. And, yes. and boy, this 
just straight in, way to go. <laughs> Set the briefcase down, open up the briefcase, pull the recorder out, and get to work. Um, good memories of, of him. And then I think I think the thing is work being the key word that comes to mind there. I called around some folks that I knew had worked with Mike in the past. Um, he and I have had similar paths and, and uh, where we've been. I was at KMA Radio for for a short time myself, and so I called some of the folks at KMA and said, "Tell me about tell me about Mike. What kind of stories have you got?" And everyone came back with the same response of, I don't have a story about Mike to gig him with. But what they did say was, he was a workhorse. He got the job done. And I know from the NAFB's vantage point, we would say the same exact thing. Whether it's, whether it's working on a committee or any kind of involvement that he's had with the association, whether it's been uh, um, contributing stories to the news service or being recognized for his work, or just being a good role model to those younger farm broadcasters when they go to a meeting and see how to get the job done right. Mike Ford is the guy that does that. So Mike, congratulations to you. Thank you for what you've done for, for farm broadcasting, not only here in this community, but for farm broadcasters all across the country. Best of luck. All right, thanks, Tom. Up next, uh, will be Craig Head. Craig is Vice President and Issue Management for Nebraska Farm Bureau because we all know Mike has issues, so. <laughs> Would you like me to elaborate, Mike, or just go right now? <laughs> okay, that's good, because there's, there's a lot of them out there. On behalf of Nebraska Farm Bureau, Mike, I just uh, have a Steve Nelson, Rob Robertson, the whole organization, and all of our members. Thank you for everything that you've done for Nebraska agriculture. Um, you know, when you think of Michael Port, this, this, now, now I'm going to go off script here a little bit because, you know, Chad Moyer, when I walked in today, he said, make sure you do the face for radio joke. Make sure you point out he's got the face for radio. And somebody else said, make sure you point out he's from Iowa. He's one of those idiots out wandering around. <laughs> and, I, and I had to point out, I'm not going to do that because I'm from Iowa. <laughs> Actually, from down in Mike's neck of the woods originally, and so uh, so I'm gonna get, take care of the formal stuff first. But I, I ended up sharing memory here, and it's a little personal, so this means a lot to me. When Joe called and said, "Can you come and talk about Mike?" I said, "I'd be honored to do that because uh, I'm originally from the Shenandoah area, and as a, a youth, uh, there was a broadcaster there, farm broadcaster, and his name was Mike Laporte. And so when I got my job at Farm Bureau, you jump forward several years. We'll talk about how many years, Mike. But jump forward, I worked in the organization and. One day, Mike calls up, and, and I did an interview with Michael Port. So when I called my mom that night, I said, guess who I did an interview with? She's like, who? I said, Michael Port. And that was like, I've arrived, Mom. I've arrived. My mom was like, I'm a so, so on behalf of the organization and on behalf of myself, Mike, thanks for everything that you've done for agriculture. Um, icon's a big word, but I think it's appropriate in this sense. Uh, I think as I see Bryce standing out here and, and all the younger staff that uh, Rural Radio and everybody, uh, Rural Radio Network has employed, you've set the bar very high, and uh, I think uh, they'll be trying to shoot and meet that goal. So thanks for everything, Mike. We appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. Uh, up next, Ed Whipple is here from Nebraska Co-op Council. So, Ed, if you'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Well, Mike, and as, as other people have said, we certainly have appreciated working with you over time. And, and with you, you think back to Mike's experiences growing up in rural, Nebra or rural Iowa, excuse me, but in the rural part of the, the country in the Midwest, certainly that's important for a lot of us. And I, I think it gives us a lot of advantages that other people don't have in the world. In, in terms of the integrity and the work ethic and those kinds of things. When Mike was growing up, um, and this may be a story that perhaps a lot of you haven't heard about, but as a youth, um, his parents were very uh, emphatic in terms of those character issues and so forth. So his dad, in order to reinforce that, one day brought home a robot. And of course, this was in kind of the science fiction area. I'm kind of from that area, you know, we were just thinking about that. Well, this robot was also a lie detector. So, here they are at dinner, and uh, Mike's uh, dad says, uh, got this robot here, it's a lie detector, and, and what happens if you tell a lie, robot will slap you. 
<laughs> so, uh, they get down to dinner and his dad says, uh, Mike, tell me now, what did you do after school today? Mike says, well, I, I did my homework. Boom! <laughs> the robot just slapped him about knocked him out of the chair. And Mike's like, oh, okay, okay. So he says, uh, you want to start over again? Uh, what did you do after school? He said, okay, I went over to my buddy's house and we watched a movie. Nothing happened with the robot. And his dad says, okay, uh, what, what kind of, what movie did you watch? And Mike says, oh, I don't know, it was some kind of documentary. Boom! <laughs> knocked, him, knocked him right off the chair. And, and Mike says, oh, wait a second. And his dad says, okay, what kind of movie? And he says, all right, it was pornography. <laughs> and his dad says, Mike, when I was your age, I didn't even know what that meant. Boom, the robot knocks his dad off. So his mom comes up and sees right in his face and his dad's on the floor and she says, I can tell that he's your son. Robot hits her and knocks her off. Needless to say, the next morning out on the front porch, there was the robot with a sign for sale sign on it. And that's kind of the end of that issue. So, uh, anyway, um, in all seriousness, the, that integrity that uh, has been brought to journalism and to rural uh, Nebraska and certainly through the rural radio network uh, is, is so important. And, you know, one of the things that we get to do as, as part of some of the founding organizations, the Co-op Council, a lot of you have heard this, but I'll, I'll try not to bore you with it, but the Co-op Council and the Farm Bureau and Farmers Union and Grange were the originating organizations. And I, I couldn't help but think that as those people put those programs together uh, 50 years ago or more, they're probably thinking, if we have employees like this, this will be success. And you've set a high bar for that. And, and as I go through, and, and particularly in the last couple of years, I know things have gone very well in terms of sales and so forth for the station. And I can't help but think those salespeople certainly are doing a wonderful job with what they do. But they're selling a the product. They're not selling air. And that's a product, and that integrity and, and workhorse attitude is certainly what has has brought that about so we've been very fortunate to work with you on a personal level um, as we've done interviews and so forth it's been so helpful and we really appreciate that so thanks Mike and enjoy your retirement thanks Ed. I like that robot joke Terry I've got a new joke for the uh, lead bank <laughs> Kevin Cooksley is here. You know, Ed mentioned the uh, organizations that uh, helped get the Nebraska Rural Radio Association started. Grange was one of those. Kevin's here representing Nebraska State Grange and chairman of the board, of course, for the Nebraska Rural Radio Association. Let's bring up Kevin Cooksley. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Ed. Well, with the exception of the uh, co-op council, you all need to know that I'm also a member of the Bad Joke Club. <laughs> anyway, I won't try to tell jokes today. But, uh, my first thing, uh, first, Ben Sass called this morning and he intended to fly up today from southeast Nebraska, but he said he's weathered in and he had to be back. So it was not flying weather in the plane, but he asked me to pass along his congratulations and best regards. So, you're a legend, you're an icon. You were actually that way even before I got to know you and I was elected to the NRA board in 19, uh, 2003, it just seems like longer ago. <laughs> yeah, you are the voice of Nebraska's agriculture, right? Uh, there's no mistake about that. And you've been that voice, what, since 1996? when you became farm news director. Uh, his job has taken him to a lot of faraway places from Vietnam to Germany, to Cuba, Mexico, uh, and 
and a lot of places in between, but your experience and the knowledge that you gained from all of those travels and from that job has proven to be invaluable to care of the end and to agriculture uh, totally um, everywhere, not just Nebraska. But I believe that that is a huge part of the reason that <coughs> KRVN claims to be the number one farm station in the nation. Uh, you provided some great leadership for these young folks that are coming along and it's been a pleasure to work with you. And uh, obviously a lot of other folks feel the same way because of the awards you picked up along the way, uh, Nebraska Hall of Ag Achievement Award, uh, Nebraska FFA VIP Award, Distinguished Service Award from the American Soybean Association. And now you're a television personality doing Skype for MTV every morning, which I, by the way, I do catch quite often. Uh, and I think you've just proven the old adage of uh, having a face for radio. So, <laughs> <laughs> you've done good there. <laughs> so thank you for making us all look good being such an excellent ambassador for KRVN and from the Rural Radio Association. It's been a pleasure getting to know you and listening to your reports. And on behalf of the board of directors, I'd like to wish you the very best on your next leg of life's journey and take pride in knowing that you've left us better off than you found us. And that's, I think, a legacy that's to be very proud of. Vicki, thank you for sharing him with us for all of these years. And good luck with living with you all the time. <laughs> I got a plan. <laughs> and finally, uh, Mike, your, your legacy is in good hands with Joe. Uh, we're all going to pitch in and buy him an eyebrow lift. <laughs> <laughs> Last day, uh, since you're goofing off today, and I understand tomorrow is your last day, uh, how would you feel about coming in on Saturday morning to make up for the time of the day? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a severance check waiting on my desk for my signature, and I uh, just thought I'd maybe make that signature. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for everything you've done for us and making us look good. And, Good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, my next guest in uh, here this, uh, this afternoon informed me that he had a couple of stories to relate to us about Mike. So let's bring up Eric Brown, former general manager of the Nebraska Radio <laughs> oh. Association. Kevin, I mentioned Mike to take some time off like today and goof it off, well, this is not the first day to Kevin that ever happened. <laughs> For example, you leave in the middle of the day, where'd you go? Well, you come back, I got my hair cut. Well, I shouldn't get cut in company time, well, it grew on company time. <laughs> <laughs> what many of you don't know is that Mike Report and Dave Threll are actually twins. <laughs> they were born on the same day and then separated at birth in what kind of different directions. Both good family people, good Christians, everything else, but they're together, work hard like this, except for one area, which is technology. And that particular area for Dave is not his cup of tea. Uh, Mike was really far ahead of his time. In 1995, we had a board meeting at Johnson Lake and trying to tell the board about, we have to think about the future, new delivery systems, and called the internet. And I was talking and the board was just blank, it wasn't going anywhere. I said, well, you know, Michael Bork helped invent the internet. So then it was okay. <laughs> I think that's so. Even in the book we wrote, he talked about how things changed in the farm broadcast reporting, sending back emails and MP3 attachment, how much easier you can gather information and get it dispatched quickly. So, Mike, congratulations. Hope you have a good Time retirement and splitting time between Kansas City and the Phoenix area and Vicki.
Good luck to you. Now, you might want to get some projects for him or out of the house. <laughs> Mike, we salute you. Thanks for the good effort for many, many years of serving the listeners of the Nebraska Rural Radio Network. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. Let's bring up Mike's twin, separated at birth, Mr. <laughs> Dave Thorell of KRB. But yes, I know how to use a pencil. And I'll still be in business when the electricity goes off. And all your numbers <laughs> Thank you for being here. My memory was jogged here when somebody was speaking. We were at Husker Harvest Days, and Rich Hawkins came to my room early and knocked. He said, say, come with me. Let's look through Mike's peephole and watch him ironing. Mike would iron his clothes when we were out on the road. That's why he looked so much better than he did. So. <laughs> but yes, uh, I'm not going to tell you how old we are. We have a birthday next Tuesday. We were born in 1949, but I'm not going to tell you that. But, that both digits will be the same number on Tuesday. But uh, we've had a good time. We didn't quite know how old Mike was. We went through his desk yesterday and found the stagecoach tickets. So. <laughs> there are advantages to being a little older. And here are some of them, some perks of being over 60. Hostage takers aren't very interested in you. No one expects you to run into a burning building. Things you buy now won't wear out. You can eat supper at four in the afternoon. And you quit trying to hold your stomach in no matter who walks into the room. <laughs> your, your eyes won't get much worse. <laughs> and your secrets are safe with your friends because they can't remember them either. <laughs> if you're like me, you miss the days when everything worked with just an on and off switch. And you tend to use more four-letter words like what, when, what time, and you need to know how many times you can say what before you have to say I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> and do not be like the man who sent his picture to the Lonely Hearts Club, and a few days later his picture came back and the Lonely Hearts Club said, no, we aren't that lonely. <laughs> now, you can have supper, as I said, at 4 o'clock. People will call you at 8.30 at night. Oh, did I wake you? <laughs> and here are some songs that we can sing together as we get older. If you remember the great Carly Simon song, Your Soul, Varicose Veins. <laughs> the Bee Gees, How Can You Mend a Broken Hip? <laughs> Johnny Nash, I Can See... I can't see clearly now. I proved that. And Nancy, Nancy Sinatra's famous song, These Boots Give Me Arthritis. And Marvin Gaye's song, I Heard It Through the Great Nets. Thanks so much for being serious. There's one more story I'm going to tell, but before I do, I just want to thank you for letting me work with you, and I've learned from you. Before you came, I really didn't know what I was doing with uh, farm broadcast. I am the last rung on the totem pole. When you hear me on the air, you'll know all the main farm people are out of the building, and I need to do the interviews. I wasn't quite sure what to do, but I just bluffed my way through, and I have learned from you, and I thank you. And I know that you love God as I love God, and Vicky does too. And as you retire, you'll see what his will is for your life. I hope your house sells soon. You really enjoy retirement. The last story is, and this is completely true, <clears throat> Three Eye Show, Great Bend, Kansas. We were supposed to stay until Saturday. We'd been there Thursday and Friday, and there were such crowds that we were worn out. We thought we'd like to leave. Is Eddie Estes in the room? I don't see him from Three Eye Show. 
So we thought, how are we going to sneak out? What reason are we going to give? Well, at the same time as it happened, former President Nixon was in the hospital. He was very, very sick. And so I said, what are we going to do? And Mike says, let's load up and we'll think of a reason if somebody asks us. So we're all loading up. And the man in the next booth says, oh, well, you're supposed to stay till Saturday. Are you leaving early? And Mike said, in the straightest face I've ever seen, and we were all straight faced, he said, yes, we found out Nixon has taken a turn for the worse, and we have to get home. <laughs> the man in the next booth says, Oh, I didn't know that. And Nixon was dead by the time we got home. <laughs> so we've had some good things all the year. Thank you very much and enjoy your return. Thank you, Dave. Now before we bring up our next guest here this afternoon, we've got a proclamation. That came to us from the Nebraska Department of Agriculture that I'll read to you, Mike. Whereas Mr. Michael Laporte has provided decades of responsible, informative, and entertaining agricultural radio reporting of great importance to the Nebraska agriculture community, and whereas the high standard of professionalism with which Mr. Michael Laporte practiced his craft created a standard of quality for other agricultural journalists to model, and whereas such reporting has contributed to the overall good of farmers, ranchers, agricultural professionals, agribusiness, and all rural residents of Nebraska. Uh, now, therefore, do I, Greg Ibaugh, Director of the Nebraska Department of Agriculture, hereby recognize Mr. Michael, the termite report, <laughs> for these accomplishments and congratulate him on his retirement from KRBN Radio, Lexington, Nebraska, this 28th day of May, 2015. And signed, Greg Ibaugh, Director, Nebraska Department of Ag. So we'll have that up here. For you. Let's bring up Craig Larson. Craig is the current general manager of the Nebraska World Radio Association. Craig is here to make a, or to say a few words, and then also we have a presentation for you along with Tim Marshall from KRB. Tim, why don't you come on up? Um, it's uh, almost 20 years to the day that I first met Mike Laporte. Uh, June 1st is my 20th anniversary at uh, KRBN, Nebraska World Radio. And, the, and Mike won't remember this, but the first day I met Mike, I told him a limerick. I heard it on the Dean Martin show in 1971, but it stuck with me when I met Mike. I said, there once was a woman named Laporte who took her husband to court. He stole my brassiere, and that's why I'm here, and I'm suing for non-support. <laughs> I don't think that was very funny, but it's a lot funnier than anything he said. <laughs> but um, Mike, we uh, we are very you know mixed emotions here. We're excited for you, and we're sad to see you go. And it's been 25 great years, and the people that have uh, echoed their uh, comments already that. Uh, uh, we wish you great success. Enjoy your babies and your uh, all your grandbabies and your family and retirement in Arizona and uh, Kansas City area, wherever you might go. And uh, if uh, Mr. Marshall, if you could come up. You have? You can. Okay. For dedicated service to Nebraska farmers and ranchers, present to Mike Laporte. 1990 through 2015, Nebraska Rural Radio Association, KRBN AM and FM, KNEB AM and FM, and KTIC AM and FM. Well, <laughs> good 
know, with all the uh, stuff that's been said, it kind of goes to your head, doesn't it? Uh, and and uh, maybe I'll just rethink it. Maybe I'll stay for a while. <laughs> And I, I threatened to do that once before, and they, they said, "Now nah, the party's set, uh, you know, uh, we can't, can't change it. Uh, well, we, I appreciate everything that's been said uh, here, and uh, uh, we'll start just by giving you a, a couple of thoughts. Uh, first of all, uh, well, Joe referred to uh, the termite, uh, uh, Mike, the termite uh, deal, and, and the thing is, you know, now really, for those of you who haven't heard this, it'll get funnier later <laughs> as you think about it. Uh, but but I like to illustrate it uh, because I think it's better to try to make the point. The termite walks into the bar and says, is the bar tender here? <laughs> Termites, you would, and uh, you know, you'll get it. <laughs> but uh, the thing about it is, Joe, every time I tell that, it actually gets better. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to have to keep that uh, in the repertoire. Uh, the thing uh, that uh, kind of you struggle with a little bit, I think, uh, as a farm broadcaster uh, in a lot of circles, is that sometimes you don't really get the respect, uh, perhaps, that you think you should. Uh, and uh, and I can illustrate it uh, with, with a story. Uh, the uh, rabbi, a Hindu priest, and a farm broadcaster were in a car together, traveling, and, and don't ask me why, because I have no idea why that would ever happen, but they were. Uh, and they got caught uh, outside of town uh, in, in kind of a, one of those unexpected spring blizzards. And there was this whiteout. They had to stop at a farmer's house along the road because they couldn't even see it go any further. And so they knocked on the guy's door and explained their situation. And the guy says, well, yeah, come on in, but I only have room for two people. Somebody's going to have to sleep in the barn. So the Hindu priest says, no problem. I'll sleep in the barn. And out he goes. Uh, a little bit later, uh, there's a knock on the door, and it's the priest. And he says, there's a cow in the barn. And... He's sacred to us, and so I can't stay in the barn. Well, the priest, uh, the, the rabbi, says, hey, I'll do it, I'll go. And so he goes to the barn, and a little bit later, again, a knock on the door, and, and he says, well, there was a pig out there, and uh, it's, you know, not kosher, and so I can't, I can't stay in the barn. So the farm broadcaster says, okay, I'll do it, and goes, and uh, is in the barn for a little bit when there's a knock on the door and there stands the cow and the pig. <laughs> so, uh, it's a struggle. We're trying to get the respect that, uh, you know, you think we should. But, uh, I tell you, uh, really, the truth is that uh, I came out here uh, in 1990 and it was really kind of a... Uh, Midlife crisis for me. I was uh, 40 years old, uh, give or take, uh, and kind of at that place where some people uh, examine their lives and they say, you know, have we accomplished uh, everything we want to accomplish? And uh, so at that particular time, uh, the industry was going through quite a little bit of transition. Uh, and there were different things that were happening. Uh, Probably one of the bigger factors was that, uh, you know, the many chemical companies that were out there spending money for farm broadcast time uh, kind of got displaced by uh, the uh, uh, glyphosate product, and, uh, and, and that was one of the big items that, that you kind of went from, you know, eight or nine different entities that were buying uh, national broadcast time down to, to one. And, uh, changed some dynamics, and people were trying to uh, re-evaluate uh, whether they even wanted to, to stay in farm broadcasting. And so I was trying to project ahead, uh, you know, 25 years from then to say where could I go that, you know, that would have a pretty good uh, chance of still, you know, wanting to do what it is that, that I was doing. Uh, and when I had the opportunity to come here, it was a perfect fit uh, because, of course, of the fact that uh, farmers and ranchers own organization and 
and one of the stated goals was to serve agriculture, so it sounded good to me. Uh, and uh, it was a very good decision, and uh, we, we've been very pleased to, to be a part of, of everything that's gone on here with the people and uh, working with all of you and, and of course, uh, dealing uh, with uh, the, the listening public uh, out there. Uh, we're fortunate uh, in that we have uh, a lot of uh, folks tuned in, and so we have some loyalty kind of built in. And from time to time, we've tried to chase them away with various things that we've done <laughs> and said, and, uh, you know, but they stay. And, uh, yeah, and so uh, uh, it is a, a very, very interesting organization, and I have been very uh, blessed to be a part of it. Uh, for that entire period of time. And, uh, and now, uh, we're going to do some transitioning. And uh, as already has uh, been uh, talked about, uh, we're going to, uh, our house is uh, for sale at Johnson Lake, and it's listed with Barrick Hauser. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful property, very peaceful, <laughs> tranquil. Just ask my neighbor there, Diane, right? Am I right? And so, the deal is that, uh, as soon as that house sells, we're, we're uh, transitioning to Overland Park, Kansas, where our daughter and uh, our son-in-law, who's not with us, but uh, these are a couple of our eight grandchildren here at the table, my daughter Jessica, and uh, we're going to try to, to get uh, fairly close to them, and, and it'll also put us in a, in a better place to kind of help Vicki's parents, uh, who are in uh, Shenandoah, Iowa, is where they're located. So. Uh, that's our, uh, and then as, as also was uh, alluded to, uh, we have a couple of boys that live in Mesa, Arizona, and uh, they moved down there quite some time ago. Really, I think what they, what they were doing was to move far enough away that we could never visit. <laughs> and, uh, and now guess what? It's payback. <laughs> and, uh, and we're going to be there, probably living with them in the winter months. So, uh, well, it's, it's going to be fun, and we'll, it'll be a new chapter, and uh, uh, so uh, I appreciate all that, uh, and we're in good hands as we go forward here uh, with the crew. Uh, Joe uh, Gangwish is a, is a veteran, uh, and uh, we've got a crew that's uh, put together that is going to be very uh, helpful. I think most of those folks have left that, that were here to, to do some other things, but uh, a very uh, a young, aggressive crew, and of course, uh, Chad uh, Moyer is from West Point and kind of anchors out that way. And uh, Chad, uh, we, we have kind of a tradition <laughs> at uh, Husker Harvest Days where at some point in the program, uh, there usually is a, uh, a full moon that arises over Husker Harvest Days, even when it's dark out. And uh, it usually happens right when Chad is, is doing his... Uh, Market report, and uh, so Joe, that's going to be your responsibility <laughs> now to carry now, that on. Mike, I just got to ask: Have you had that checked out like I asked you to? <laughs> there is going to be a, uh, a virtual uh, moon that will be coming, <laughs> and, uh, so we're going to we're going to fill in. Uh, and uh, so, at any rate, uh, you know there have been some interesting times, and. Uh, uh, we've tried to have some fun as, as we've gone along and, uh, and uh, you know, done some things that we probably shouldn't have done. <laughs> and said some things publicly that we sure shouldn't have said. <laughs> and Dave, would you come up here for a second? Uh, because, uh, you know, they talk about us being twins uh, separated at birth. And, uh, you know, we are, well, thank you, the same age, exactly, but don't I look like you? <laughs> So because of my good clean living. Uh, but uh, it, and Dave, you know, here's the thing, and I, and I really believe this is true uh, to, to a degree. You know, everybody at, at KRVN uh, could leave on the same day, and nobody would really care. But if Dave Thoreau leaves, we're, we've got trouble. <laughs> so whenever that happens, uh, we'll, we'll break for that. Uh, and, and I say that, uh, you know, respectfully because, uh, you know, I, I, I'm exaggerating. But in, in some ways, it's true. Uh, Dave uh, has a special place, I think, in the 
Volitioner's Hearts, and uh, has just kind of weaseled his way in. <laughs> he certainly hasn't earned it. <laughs> So, uh, at any rate, uh, probably best just to close this down. And, uh, let me let me just end by giving you one one final story that kind of I think summarizes perhaps uh, where we're headed. A guy uh, goes in and gets fitted for a partial at his dentist, and the dentist says you'll have no problem. He says, but the real key, uh, it, especially at first, is to to take the partial out at night when you go to bed. So the first couple of nights, absolutely no problem. He remembered to do that. But the third night, he just absolutely was so tired that he plopped down on the bed and forgot he even had it in. Well, at 2 a.m. in the morning, he was awakened with a very sharp pain in his throat. And uh, he had the dentist's cell phone, which I don't know how that ever happened, uh, a miracle, but he called the dentist at 2 a.m. and says he explained his problem, and the dentist says, you're going to have to see a throat specialist because I can't help you. That's where the pain is. And so he gave the guy uh, the name of a good throat specialist, and he was making that contact uh, at about the same time that the pain moved to his stomach area. And so the Throat specialist says, listen, if it had been just a few seconds earlier, I could have helped you. But this out of my hands now, you're going to have to go to this stomach specialist. I gave him the, all the information and he called, you probably know where this is <laughs> Called the, uh, the stomach specialist and was explaining it. And just at that time, wouldn't you know, the uh, pain moved to his lower abdomen. And so the stomach specialist says, well, I'll give you the name of a good rectal specialist that I know, and, and we'll get you set up. So he called the rectal specialist. He said, yep, I can see you come right in. And so they got him on the little examination table with his feet and the stirrups and his little miner's cap, you know, with the little light on it. And he was looking down there to see what the problem was. And he said, my God, man, I see teeth. You need a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> and the moral of that story is it all works out in the end. <laughs> and so uh, you know, that's, that's where retirement's going for me. <laughs> uh, it's all going to work out. Well, thank you so very much. Gifts we give away for KRVN. This is signed by all the employees at KRVN with a special note for you. So thank you, sir. Get on up here, Don. You'll be the last one to sign. <laughs> well, again, Mike, uh, we wish you the best on your retirement. Appreciate everybody being here this afternoon. Uh, you're welcome to stick around for more uh, coffee, cake, fellowship with Mike. So thanks again for coming.